Well, welcome everyone. This is July 25th, 2022. It's Jenkins Governance Meeting. Topics for today include news, action items, Blue Ocean Admonition, Embeddable Build Status Plugin from last meeting, CDF updates if Oleg joins us, and forum and community topics if Gavin's available. Any other topics that need to go on the agenda? Okay, then let's go back to the, the top of the agenda. So by way of news, the next long-term support release Release candidate is due out on Wednesday with release two weeks afterwards. Thanks to Alex Brandes uh, as our release lead. He's been the release lead for the last two long-term support releases. Thanks very much. We've got an upcoming conference, the, the Southern California Linux Expo in Los Angeles at the end of this week. Kosuke will be speaking and Alyssa and I are also speaking. Basil had noted that Jakarta mail migration is in progress. Basil, what would you like to tell us about that? Um, this landed earlier this week or last week. And the important thing to note for users is that uh, they need to update some plugins in lockstep with each other. Um, and those are indicated in the release notes. So, um, if you want to pull up, for example, the mailer plugins release notes, you should be able to see the messaging that we put in place. Um, if you if you see that section that says related plugin releases, it's a little bit further down. But that um, that gives you an example of, you know, these three plugins need to all be upgraded at the same time. Um, so that's an important note for users, and. Um, if, if it's actually more than just those three, if you go back to the Jira Epic, there's there's a handful of them, but those three are the most most popular ones. Um, there's a, there's some additional, for example, I fixed up the SAML plugin and the Mail Watcher plugin, um, but those are installed on you know two percent of installations, so they're they're not as as common. The one the one thing that I would want to note in this meeting is that the disk usage plugin uh, is kind of in a in an odd state so I didn't touch it but that one could use a volunteer if, if someone is if someone cares about using this plugin um, the reason I didn't update it was that releases are currently blocked because there is there is a security vulnerability that is on the main branch that has not been released. So the security team blocked future releases to prevent that vulnerability from ever being released in the first place. So if someone, so basically fixing this plugin up is is more involved than you know just submitting a pull request or, or adopting it. There's some there's some additional catch up work that needs to be done, which I didn't volunteer myself to do. But if anyone is interested in using this plugin, um, it, I don't think it's going to work with the Jakarta mail migration. And I don't think any changes can be made to it until these security issues are dealt with. Um, so that, that would be a great example for someone to volunteer and pick this up if they're using this. Um, but other than that, I think we're in good shape with this migration, so. Thank you. Well, and Bruno, Bruno and I are actually doing a session at DevOps World tutoring people as part of a workshop on how to adopt a plugin. We may pick this one as one of our candidates just to use as part of a lab exercise. So it's that's an interestingly I, complex one. I don't know what the vulnerability is on the main branch. So it might be a very simple one, like reverting one commit, but it might so it might be a complicated one. I don't I don't have access to the security tickets, so I didn't. I wasn't able to to read it. There is a, a link to the ticket, which is private. So I think um, whoever whoever wants to take this on might um, might benefit from being able to read that ticket so that they know what they're dealing with. Got it. Well, and that that knowledge should probably then inform: Do I want to adopt it or not? Because if I'm not an active user of it, then adopting it and saying I'm going to pick up a security fix maybe more than they're ready to do. Thanks, good guidance. Buzzle, anything else? No. All right, thank you. So action items, 
we've got a bunch that I have to sadly report I've made no progress on. And it'll probably be that way for at least another two or three weeks just for all the things I've got to do. So patience with me. Now this one, the last one that we had put on last week, Gavin Mogan created a proposal to hire a writer. I think we may have a solution here that may address it. I was hoping to have Gavin here, but I wanted to highlight this at least to show people what, so Gavin's concern was that the ocean is not being actively maintained, right? It's, it's not, being, not being actively enhanced. And because it's not being actively enhanced, uh, that makes it difficult for people who arrive new to Jenkins and are then surprised oh, this thing that's described in lots of places is not getting more enhancements. Certain fixes are being applied and security fixes are being applied when, when selected. So what Kevin has done uh, is he's created a standard admonition to put on the page. And it says this kind of thing here, an info block that says, Blue Ocean is not receiving further functionality updates. It will continue to provide pipeline visualization, but will not be enhanced further. Um, so for me, this was, and Gavin has seen this and said, yeah, that seems reasonable. Uh, others are welcome to comment on the poll request, encouraged to do so. Just wanted to be sure you're aware now what this, this standard text or some variant of it will appear on most of the Blue Ocean pages. Like right now, it appears on creating a pipeline and on dashboard and on activity view so that users who are reading will see that status as they're working through their reading. Any comments or concerns there? All right. I think it, I think it looks great. It's, it's really good to be transparent about the status. So I think the message is great. I, and I agree with that. Now I like, I did like, the Docs Office Hours Asia segment said, hey, could we refine the message so that when we're talking about pipeline editor, we don't, we don't do as much to mention stage view, but we mention specifics for pipeline editor. And that's, that's something that we'll work with Kevin on separately. It's, it's, I think it's an interesting idea of, are there variations we should use for each of those pages that will make the message clearer? Great. If nothing else on Blue Ocean, let's go on to the next topic then. Last, last time we met, we had an item, an action item raised that the embeddable build status plugin bundles a, was bundling a proprietary font. And as it's a proprietary font, it's not allowed to be redistributed. And so it was violating the Jenkins terms for Jenkins plugins. And so what we did two weeks ago, we, we said, we'll set a two-week clock if no one adopts the plugin, within two weeks, we will cease distribution of that plugin because it's violating the terms. And in, the, in that intervening two weeks, it's been adopted and a release has been delivered that removes the proprietary font. Thanks, special thanks to Basel for highlighting how to do that change. It was actually a very simple change based on his guidance. And the plugin now has a few more tests thanks to his guidance. So release is done. Uh, plugin is still on ci.jenkins.io and uh, better maintained than before. I think most of the credit goes to you, Mark, for picking it up because I think that was that was very kind of you to adopt this very rarely used plugin. Yeah, and, and in this case, I admit it was it was guided self-interest. I didn't want the infra team to waste the time removing it. And so that's a that's a terrible reason to do it, but it was cheaper to, to adopt it than it was to go through the process of removing it from all the infrastructure. All right, and Oleg's not here, so I'm gonna drop the updates from CDF. And forums and community topics, I had two or three topics that I thought might be worthwhile even without Gavin here. So if you're okay with that, there is a discussion right now on a vendor site. So what Gavin has proposed is, hey, let's create a site called vendors.jenkins.io that is a place where companies that 
provide support services or sell products based on Jenkins or et cetera could do, um, place their information so that others can find it. Right now, what we have is an outdated wiki page that points to vendors that are absolutely no longer active. So here's what his current prototype looks like. And what you see is we've got two vendors, a, a hypothetical vendor here that he created and a less hypothetical vendor here that I created some rough data for. Now the data is not correct on these, but the, the, the sampling is intended or the, uh, the layout is a, an idea. And what this gives then is a link here to more information about the vendor and a link to their support site or a link to their website. The idea being, okay, this way, this is much better than let's do the search for Jenkins commercial vendors on the wiki page. And here it is. This one is how it currently looks today. Actually, and Evelina, you may recognize one or more of these, these names. Well, it's kind of a historical name. <laughs> exactly. Right. And, and that's what this page is sort of the, the historical, wow, it's mm -hmm. not been touched in five plus years. And so it's so badly out of date that this is going otherwise I would expect it was not touched for 20 years sorry that's just a joke <laughs> I just right. wonder like how how do we decide who ends up there because as you pointed out I know a company that uh, I, I believe should be there or two but do mm -hmm. we have some criteria actually any company that would like to place themselves there we would encourage them to submit some sample data so we can test drive it because mm -hmm. that way we we get a sense Right now, my, my, my scope is limited because I don't know all the companies that are providing products. And so I provided data, but if you are aware of someone that would be willing to provide data, the data format is actually quite simple. It's a little YAML file. And so, so it's, you can see the YAML file that I provided is someplace further down here. Here's the, here's the YAML file that, that Gavin did. Mm -hmm. And here's the YAML file that I did, this one. And if, if, if you've got a vendor that might be interested in being included, we would love to have sample data from them. Okay, and then uh, where do they send it? They just, if they just post it right here as a reply, this, just like this, I did. Uh, in this uh, um, thread, okay. And then because the companies I'm talking about are consulting companies that I know have consultants that are really, really good at Jenkins. So that's kind of thing you're looking for. Okay. Exactly. And I, and I think that is, that is very well aligned with what Gavin's looking for. What, what, what started his conversation about this was, hey, we get people who ask questions on community.jenkins.io that are well beyond what a, a person who is doing this for nothing would do. But if we could point them to consultants mm -hmm. or to organizations that offer so services for, for fee, they may be able to get the answer they need. And the community can benefit overall because we're not just having people expect commercial grade support from a bunch of volunteers. Great. I I don't work with these companies anymore, but I'll drop them a message and uh, uh, direct them to the thread so they can just take care of that if if they think it's the right fit. I mean, I'm sure it is, but I'm not yeah, going to do the job. <laughs> well, that would that would be a great thing if you could just share a pointer to them mm -hmm. saying, "Hey, here's this thing that's being assembled. Get your get your name up on this site." Thank you. All right, so next topic was that there is a new, there's a, there was recently a series of 25 plus pull requests that were merged into Jenkins Core to begin the process of getting us eventually ready to enable content security policy. And, and so content security policy, here's a, the video segment is linked that talks about what it is, how it works and why we're doing this. We're still quite a, quite a ways away from being ready to enable it, but 
it will be it was promoted in last year's Hectoberfest, will be promoted again in this year's Hectoberfest, and we hope work will continue so that the day will come when we can consider enabling content security policy on Jenkins Core and thus prevent a whole bunch of cross-site scripting attacks with a single configuration. So, so just be aware of that. It's no, no action required yet from plugin maintainers because it's most mm -hmm. important that we get core ready first. And so Daniel Beck, who's doing much of the work and Vadek Falonier, the, the security officer are both making people aware without telling any of the plugin maintainers, oh, you must do something. Right now it is just in core and it's intentionally being done in a way that should be kept 100% compatible. All right, so last item I had was on GitHub comment ops. And I have to admit, I am, I am really pleased with this. The ongoing discussion talks about a technique that Tim Jacome has added for Jenkins Core and several additional repositories that allow a, a comment to perform operations that normally are only allowed for maintainers, like labeling a pull request or removing a label or asking for reviewers by name. And I found this to be, at least for me personally, quite helpful because it means I can submit a pull request and in the text of the pull request, if I just put slash reviewer K Martins 27, it will ask for Kevin to be a reviewer if he's got merge permission on that repo. So very, very nice capability. Any other topics we need to go over today in governance meeting? All right, I'll take that as, a, as an end. Thanks very much.